Hello again everyone, it's been a long time since I've tested an iRix lens, in fact it's not often that they bring them out, but today I'm pleased to be testing out their new 45mm f1.4 Dragonfly. It's a manual focus prime lens for digital SLR cameras, full frame or APS-C, and it comes in Canon EF, Nikon F and Pentax K mounts, although you can also adapt it onto mirrorless cameras quite easily. It costs about 700 US dollars, or about 520 pounds in the UK, so it's obviously intended to be a premium lens here. I'd like to thank iRix for sending me a sample copy of it for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. 45mm on a full frame camera is a really nice field of view, you basically get the popular standard view of a 50mm lens, but just a little wider, to draw in a little more of the bigger picture, while still maintaining a nice little emphasis on your subject, I like that. This particular lens is manual focus only, which takes a little practice and will slightly slow down your shooting, but you do get a camera controlled aperture mechanism and full EXIF information transmitted to your camera as well as focus confirmation to help out a little. Let's look at its build quality then. The lens is rather big and weighty, weighing 2 pounds or just under a kilogram, but the build quality feels absolutely excellent. It's all based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket, in fact Irex advertised the lens as being very well weather sealed overall. The focus ring is nicely rubberized with a cool looking ridge to make it even more tactile, that focus ring turns incredibly smoothly and precisely, it's a real pleasure to use. As you focus more closely, the image zooms in a bit, as you can see here. And above that is a focus locking ring, which will hold the focus ring in place. That tends to be more of a useful feature on very wide angle lenses, but still, if you're doing landscape photography, you might use it to lock the lens to infinity, or it might be useful if you're doing stop motion animation or, or something unusual like that. The filter thread size is a large 77mm in diameter, and the lens comes with a pouch and a generously deep hood. Overall, it's clear that one thing you're paying for here is build quality, the lens is big, very solidly made, and a pleasure to use. Now let's look at image quality. I have a Canon version of the lens here, and I've adapted it onto my high resolution camera, a 42 megapixel Sony a7R2. At f1.4, we see a moderately detailed image in the middle, but it's clouded over by some ghosting and very low contrast. Yes, the lens is focused properly here. Unusually, the corner image quality has far more contrast, and just a little more sharpness. Usually the centre image quality is better. I also tested a Nikon version of the lens, and the results were the same, and I've seen other reviews which confirm this lens's behaviour at f1.4, so that's a strange characteristic. Stop down to f2, and the corners look a little brighter, but otherwise more or less the same. The good news though, is that the middle of the image looks nice and sharp now, with good contrast being restored. Stop down to f2.8, and image quality in the middle looks perfect now, and the corner image quality looks very slightly sharper than before, with just a tiny little edge of purple colour fringing. The image quality stays this sharp down to f11, stop down any darker, and the effect of diffraction will begin to soften your image. So, the lens is nice and sharp across the image frame from f2, which is great to see, although we're still left with that unusual problem of the image quality at f1.4, softer in the middle than in the corners, that's a little disappointing on a premium lens. Now my APS-C camera is on loan to a friend at the moment, so let's take a look at the lens's distortion and vignetting on full frame. The lens projects almost no distortion, which is good to see. Vignetting is just moderate at f1.4, the corners do look a bit dark, but not quite as bad as on most competing 50mm lenses. Stop down to f2, and those corners brighten up a little, and at f2.8, the vignetting is pretty much gone, so it's a relatively good performance here. Now, let's see about close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to just under 40cm, closer than usual for a standard prime lens. 
At f1.4, we continue to see that contrast problem, but at f2, contrast improves, and at f2.8, close-up image quality is very good. Let's see now how well the lens works against bright light. The lens performs fairly well. We lose some contrast, but we don't see much flaring, and what there is looks nice and soft. Finally, bokeh. Irex advertised that as being a strength of the lens, and it's certainly true that your out-of-focus backgrounds are rendered particularly nicely, even quite difficult backgrounds. There's just something about the way the bokeh looks that I really love. My sample pictures always looked really lovely to me at f1.4. So then, overall. The Irex 45mm f1.4 is a fairly big and somewhat expensive manual focus lens. It has quite a few commendable features. Its build quality is wonderful, its vignetting and distortion low, its 45mm field of view nice and versatile, its work against bright lights is strong, and its bokeh always looks nice, leaving you with some pretty striking images. Its Achilles heel really is that the middle of your images look a little soft at f1.4, and that'll be a bit of a spanner in the works for some people. If you're happy to get a 50mm lens instead, then there are options which are a lot sharper at f1.4. It's a bit of an issue for me personally, as I love image sharpness. But if that's not an issue for you, then the Irex 45mm is a pleasant manual focus lens to handle that can get you more than pleasant images with particularly lovely colours and bokeh.